G'day and welcome to our very special series here on the Inside Podcast Network, Inside MBO Show, where I am going to take you through a journey from picks one through picks 14. And also in this series, we're going to be doing an Insight Podcast Network's mock extravaganza where we have a 20-person mock draft. So you can learn tips, tricks, strategies, and punts for wherever you may fall from pick one through pick 14 in your NBA fantasy draft this season. A bit of a caveat, the first three drafts happened before the Dame Lillian trade. We've been on this. We've been working hard to give you the best information for your drafts, especially for your cash leagues, because I know it's a mock, but we want you to have the best intel for your cash league. But check this series out. It's going to be wild. There are some twists and turns. You're not going to get these guys always where you're going to get them as we get today. But I can tell you right now, there are some very good hints and tricks, and there is a very spicy one coming up when I pick from pick one, but with upside. So the first three in the books, we've got pick one with Jokic, the safest houses one. We've got pick one with Jokic, the upside, spicy one. And then we've got a pick two with not Joel Embiid, with Luka Doncic. It's coming all up on the Insight MBO Show. Join us for the journey. We're mocking hard. We're giving you the best information for your NBA fantasy season right here. Like, subscribe, and especially on YouTube, because when we get to 1,000 subscribers, we're going to give you, if you leave your name in the comments below, bing, 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 we're going to give one person around the world your name on your favorite team jersey, your number, any way you want it. All thanks to Insight NBA. Welcome to the ultimate super coach and fantasy sports show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Shakalaka. Welcome everybody to Maddie's Mocks, the first in a series where I'm going to take you through picks one to 14. So I'm picking at Penny Hardaway, number one to start it off with my guy right here, Jake Skidmore. How you doing, Skiddy? What's going on, Matty G? Yeah, boy, I'm going well. Um, yeah, ready to crack into another mock draft with you. I'm so excited for this uh, series that you're going to be pulling out, showing everyone uh, where to draft from one to t- uh, 14. This is going to be so good. So can't wait to see what you're going to pull out in this draft. Well, uh, surprise, surprise! It's going to be Nikola Jokic with the number one pick. So I'm going to um, I'm going to share my screen on this one. I don't think I can do anything else about that one. Um, it's pretty much it's pretty much the consensus number one pick, and I won a league with him uh, last year. Uh, the draft is opening up right now, as you can see, Skitty. Um, we love we love this kind of gear. We love a good old fashioned mock draft. So this is a nice little one where we're going to be able to go head to head and have some fun with it. No surprises though when we really say that. Nikola Jokic is the number one pick. Mm-hmm. I had an interesting conversation though with um, Dan Titus from Yahoo Sports earlier in an interview that we did, and he's starting to draft a few players higher than Joel Embiid. So if you weren't okay, obviously Rob. Jokic is number one, but availability in a Nick Nurse system, mm-hmm. based on how much Nick Nurse plays his guys, he's under the impression that maybe Joel Embiid should not be drafted number two because of those niggling injuries. Rob. What do you think? I mean, yeah, that's a that's a big take, and Dan Titus has obviously done some fantastic work. I mean, uh, I can definitely see it in the way that you know the uh, games played could scare people off, but I still think, man, you look at last year, man. He he had that unbelievable game. He has the ability to go for like sixty points. You know, he had that what it was. I think it was sixty ten with seven assists and like seven blocks or something like that. It was just unbelievable. So, Embiid has that ability in him. I just like I know Luca does as well, but Luca has his deficiencies now with Kyrie there as well. Do you reckon if like say if James Harden does move, like does like that would bump Embiid up a little bit? Don't you reckon? I mean, I know he's got to get. I, more I the think ball. it. Yeah, I think it does, but I also think it's the beginning of the end for life as we know it with the Philadelphia 76ers in this iteration of the process period. So I think very much if it goes that way and if it goes badly and then Joel wants out, I I don't know if he's the superstar after all of his love and heart that he's put into Philadelphia to take that. I think he's seen what happens when you ask out. Um, Mm. And I think he's been a guy who's actually shut his mouth a little bit. Do you remember like Troel Embiid? Like just used to like just say shit all the time. He's dialed that 
the, he's just he still trolls because it's him, yeah. but he's dialed it back a little bit the last couple of years by way of mm. not just being such an ass clown and saying mm. shit. He's really focused on basketball. That MVP, I felt, meant a lot to him personally to be yeah. recognized for his journey. So, look, I do actually think it's a valid theory. And it's interesting. You can see right here the ranks. Jokic is obviously number one. ADP-wise, Luca's bumped up very close to yeah. the, the series there with Joel and, and Luca. Ranks-wise, you can see that they're X-ranks-wise, Luca's there at number two over Joel. You can see that rank there for Luca that was 45, which is a, a, a silly rank on Yahoo, to be fair. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know why Siri's popped up on my screen, but there we go. Damn you, Siri. Oh, look, there we go. Luke at number two straight away. Joel Embiid yeah. with the third pick. We'll talk through these picks. So I'll talk up to you, Skitty. You take it through back to you and then talk it down to me, mate. We want everyone to know what picks are going. So yeah. Joel was third. Halliburton was four. Tatum was five. Um, this is all going pretty much the either Shea or Halliburton route with that early pick as the first guard yeah. off the board, you'd say. Absolutely. The the top six oh, are pretty well oh, in. Oh, Skitty, Skitty, Giannis. And oh. Tacumpo went at six. And I know you wanted to build at him at nine. So Giannis oh. going at six was a bit of a surprise. Shea at seven, good value. Uh, Steph Curry mm. at eight. So this has put you in a position that you did not think you were going to be in. No, I did not. I thought I was really going to be able to get Giannis there. But okay, I guess some people are starting to go up a bit on Giannis. But I'm just going to take. Lamelo ball now, um, yep. so I think yeah, getting Lamelo there. That's all right. So I don't have to worry about doing that anymore. I can now uh, build around Lamelo, which I'm okay with. Um, I think everyone uh, should also know just before we get more into this, the Dame Lillard um, update of that he apparently there's more talks with uh, the Phoenix uh, with Phoenix Suns now in the conversation with Miami. Um, yep. So. Uh, Dame looking, they could go as uh, some people are predicting Monday. Um, yep. So that would be great because then we get a bit more of a shore up uh, for what is going on in this situation. Um, so, October 3rd is the deadline. Portland want him out okay. by camp and that's fair enough. So if that's yep. going to be the case, we're going to see something happen in the next uh, 10 days. It's September 23 as we're recording this one. So yeah, the Dame at 10, obviously value. And then what else has been going off the board there, Skitty? Uh, what else has, what else has been going on? I mean, geez, uh, what do we miss? I can't even. Kyrie at 11, Anthony Thank Davis you. at 12, bonus at 13. That's about where he's going. Bonus. Yeah. I don't mind some bonus going there. I mean, I'm, I think I'm, a, I think I'm actually going a little bit higher on some bonus this year. I mean, um, he's, um, he's got that all round game. It's like Jokic yep. light. It's he's not on Jokic's level, but he's like you know picking him around like the turn. He, I'm actually kind of starting to go like I'm starting to think Sabonis at twelve is actually you know good yeah. uh, a good a good pick there actually. Um, yeah, like I think he's he's got a fantasy friendly game that you're actually able to build around. So um, yeah, I, don't I wonder if Agelio. I wonder if Rogelio is actually a Mick Dell fan, the big horse himself, because uh, Mick took Anthony Davis into Sabonis in a draft and was quite competitive um, the other week. So that's not, oh, he goes, there goes the Don. There, there goes Spider, you buggers. But that's okay, because I am at, I am going to go with Devin Booker. He makes a bit more sense to pair with Lamelo, in my opinion, than... Um, than Spider does at this uh, present time, so that's okay. And then we see Miles uh, Mikel Bridges going off the board, so I don't mind uh, that pick there either. Um, Mikel's uh, obviously got everything going for him now in um, in Brooklyn, so uh, I like that pick. And then Ant Ant next, who everyone seems to want on their team. Mm. Yeah, people want him quite a lot um, this season. Um, He's high. Bam out of bio with the 19th pick. Anthony mm. Edwards, you said 18. This is it's shaping up. Now I've thrown some guys in my queue. Um, and I want mm. people to see how this happens and how the decimation of your queue goes, especially when you have to wait a long time at the turn. It's not my first time drafting it one. So I'm a little bit used to it. I am surprised to start mm. to see Jaron Jackson's value Good. fall now. I know that you spoke Good. about it and you were you were right on that early about Jaron Jackson as being overdrafted. Yeah. I would not expect yeah. to be getting him 24. I've thrown him in because Trey Young, who was in my queue, he's gone at 20. 21 was Desmond Bain. It's too high. There Ooh, we go. There Jaron, Jaron Jackson Jr. went straight yeah. off the queue for me. So this puts me in a situation because I don't want to trust the next guys in my in the queue. I'm going to take K to buy myself some time at the end because 
right about now, I'm I'm a little bit fussy with who I draft here. Who's going to be the healthiest of Kawhi, Butler, and George? So I'm going to buy myself some more time into Cade because I'm high on Cade Cunningham. I'm not going to get him back again. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm taking him. Love oh. love I love Cade there, man. But yeah, as I was saying with Jaron, I'm um I'm, wow. I'm I'm happy with him around like you know the twenty like you know after twenty I'm happy with that. Um, just purely like blocks are going to be a bit more. Oh. You know, there's going to be a few more blocks players that can get high blocks that will um, that we've been saying. So, um, you know, with Chet and Wemby coming in, like blocks, you're going to have more players that are going to be able to get you those big blocks. Why Jaron's um, was so high last year was because there wasn't like it was him, Miles Turner. Um, Nick Claxton, like these were the guys that were getting you those big block games consistently. Now we can have more people that are going to be able to get you those big block numbers, I believe anyway, which I think diminishes Jaron's, um, his fantasy output for this year because he gets the blocks and he does other things okay. But if you take away blocks, he shoots down the rankings. Like he goes to like 70 or something like that. So if he can't return those outrageous block numbers, he's not like a middle second round pick for me. I'm happy to take him, you know, third round. That's fine. But I'm not putting all my eggs in that one basket for my second round pick when there's guys that can give you more output and better fantasy uh, numbers in the other categories as well. So that's where I've taken Pascal Siakam because I had a look at my queue and I hope if you were watching on YouTube, you were just having a look at my my internal struggle and dilemma because the next guys that fall by ranking wise were Kawhi, um, Harden, dudes who I do not trust, but I trust Pascal Siakam with Fred Van Vliet going to have high output for me and to play a lot of games and not to be um, injured. So I'm hoping that that was a safe as houses kind of pick. After that one, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Darius Garland, Nikola Vucevic, uh, DeJounte Murray, Jimmy Butler, and Carl Anthony Towns fell to the 32nd pick. And there you picked up Paul George with that injury uncertainty with the 33rd pick. And there's Lowry, right. who was the other guy I was looking at. He'll be right. Paul George will be right. So um, that's absolutely – I think that's a good, uh, good spot to take Paul George. Like, um, he works well as well with Lamelo and Booker. Um, that gets my steals up quite nicely as well, um, along with keeping my points well. Um, my assists are right. I'm expecting a bump up in Booker's assists as well this season. Um, I think he's going to have more of a ball-dominant role than um, uh, Bradley Beal will be. Um, so I'm happy to shore that up. So I'm kind of, I can kind of go two ways right now, right? I'm, uh, my field goal percentage isn't great, but my free throws are beautiful. I can now look to try and get myself a center uh, to try and shore up blocks if I want to go that route, or I can, can I can punt them. Um, so we're going to have a look at that. And then who's gone now? Scotty Barnes has just gone. What do you think of Scotty Barnes this year, mate? Yeah, love bounce back Barton. See, 37th is probably a little bit high. I have seen him going in the late 40s. Mobley at 36. These are go- like I put Mobley in my queue. If he was coming back to me, I was happy. Kessler before then, as you said, Lowry Markinen. So this is all making its way back to you, Jalen Brunson. Guys who I was looking at, you can people can see my queue where I'm looking. I'm looking for Miles Turner, um, Drew Holiday, and Victor Wenbanyama at the back end of You're this. Not obviously, I'm not getting Turner. Why are you taking him? You're not getting Turner. I'm I'm taking this pick. <laughs> Yeah, there you, you go. Good. There he goes. You can. Uh, All right. Yeah, this is what happens oh, when you talk about guys that are draft. It's fine. This is oh, this know, is fine. I know I should burning fire. Do that. This is fine. Okay, so Miles no, I like it. You got to look. You got to you got to talk through. I know it's etiquette, but at a point you've got to talk about why you're thinking in that way, so you can actually understand the frustration not to get that pick. Because then you've you've taken my guy in turn, Victor Wenbanyama. Mm who I yeah. was maybe hoping was going to drop around to me. So this is how it happens in a draft. And if you're going to talk about it, if you're going to give an analysis on it, you've got to go through the frustrations and the heartbreak of missing out on your guy at the same time. 100, 100%. And also to like getting Victor at pick 40 when he's been going top 30s or, or so, like for a guy that can get that amount of blocks, that's great. There goes De'Aaron Fox um, mm-hmm. at 42. We can see here LeBron James is still there at pick Oh, yeah, I'm. There, he goes. Uh, there, there, there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> and this is, we. So there we go. Darren Fox at 41. LeBron James at 42. That's a mm-hmm. that's a late pick. Him. This is starting to go to your uh, your early upside and some safest houses picks. Uh, Julius mm-hmm. Randall there, um, 43rd. 
Zach 44, yeah. Zach Levine. Yep. Uh, so LeBron there, like that's just great value. If you're getting LeBron at 42, like that's that's uh, that's some great drafting there. Uh, Jamal Murray what? at peak 45. I think that's a lead. Um, it's not too early, but yeah, if you want your I've guy, got, I mean, it's not I've it's a nice pick. Nice I would have Drew Holiday still sitting there though. Like Drew Holiday, are you taking Jamal Murray ahead of Drew Holiday? I'm I'm not sure for his, you know. Mm. I'm, because the steel's there, have, there goes Drew, there goes Jalen, and now it's your pick. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning big boy. I actually like some flexibility okay. that I've got here. I'm looking – look, I'm going to go either Claxton or Holgren, definitely, with yeah. one of them. I, I like what I've got there, getting those guys around there. But OG Ananobi, for me, feeds what I'm doing. I'm making a, an – purposes. Now, this is we're talking about position eligibility here. Claxton only fills my center spot. In this particular draft, it's a two-center league, so I'm okay to draft him, not having – I've got a center, though, with Jokic, so I don't want to go too heavy there. Chet Holgren has dual eligibility. Um mm-hmm. I'm going to go Holgren to hold my free th- – oh, no, I'm going to go Claxton. I'm going to go – he's a better player this season. He's going to buoy my uh, field goal percentage up uh, quite nicely. I like it. I don't think I'll get Chet on the way back, and I'm just happy to let that yeah. go. My three-pointers aren't that great, but I think my team is starting to find some form. I'm just going to have yeah. to lean into points, um, three-pointers, I think, next, and I'll be able to get points and threes, I think, with some of my, my flyers down the track. Love that. I love the yeah, the way that your team's kind of shaping out is um is very nice the way that you've um one that you've so I've got, in there, there goes Chet, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So I've gone my point guard is to start off with Cade Cunningham, OG Ananobi at shooting guard, a bit of a Raptors stack with Pascal Siakam. Jokic was uh, my number one pick at center and Claxton. Those are purely center guys. So the next center I draft has to be dual eligibility to fill a forward spot. And a center spot. I can't lean into this. Is a two center league though. Uh, next guys off the board after Chet at fifty one was Brandon Ingram fifty two, Jordan Poole fifty three, Demar Derozan fifty four. Uh, that's ridiculous. Oh, actually, no, sorry. That's actually that's about right. Actually, yeah. And sorry, DeAndre Ayton, the, the the future Portland Trailblazer, uh, DeAndre Ayton. Uh, no, we can't say that. He's a Phoenix Sun for now. <laughs> uh, at pick 50, we, we, I don't want. I don't want to be aggregated by the Suns fans who I love dearly. Uh, 50, 50, 60, 56 is Shengun, who you were not going to touch because you think he could have a diminished role in Houston this season, mate. I do think that just how I think Ime Udoka is going to go for more of a defensive kind of uh, get up um, there. Let me just try and zone in because I think. We'll pick away 56. You know what? I don't really like taking him, but in this one, he works for my team, so I'm going to take Bradley Beal. Uh, yeah, I think just Ooh, the defensive way that, um, uh, that Yudoku is probably going to look for, I think we could see more Jabari Smith Jr. and um, Tari Eason kind of lineups where Shangun doesn't get as much, but I really like Shangun. I just have I just don't have a lot of faith in what... Um, Yudoka is going to do there. So uh, let's just hope that Yudoka doesn't bench him. Um, so we'll see how that goes, Matty. Yeah, I'm. Look, I think they were they've been looking. They made no like no beef about going out and getting a center, and they got Jock Landau, who's an Aussie legend, mm-hmm. and we love Jock. Um, yeah, but bro. yeah, we love you, Jockey. Um, but look, he was he was endeared with the Phoenix Suns fan as well. Yeah, He's. He, he showed his switchability as a defender, mm. but I do think that was a little bit of organizational posturing to be like, hey, Alperin, pony up, mate. And I think if they're mm. really going on the same page, that's something that's going to be tracking well. Mate, there's been a whole bunch of picks that have flown off the board. My Q's yeah, gone decimated. You yeah, Brad Hill, <laughs> Tyrese, Tyrese Maxey, 58. 59 was Franz Wagner. Jared Allen at 60. Tyus Jones, 61. Devin Vassell, who was also in my Q at 62. Cam Johnson there with the 63rd pick. Back to you, Skidmore. Scared more. Bit, ooh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you really would. Uh, I mean, can I shore up my me field goal percentage? Yeah, it's I'm pretty dog shit at the moment, actually. I don't think he kind of works. <laughs> I'm going to go with Josh Giddy here. Um, I was tossing up between him and Zion at the 64th pick. I would probably take Zion there in most other cases, but I think the way that my team is kind of going out, Zion's obviously – biggest um category is his field goal percentage along with his scoring um but 
the way my team is at the moment, it, I'm not looking for field goal percentage. Um, I'd rather boost my rebounds and assist and take Giddy there. And I just am I, like, uh, am I am I gonna? Is this gonna happen? I didn't put him in my oh, queue because no. I didn't want to. This could happen. No, surely Zion doesn't fall to me. Ah, uh, son of a bitch! Uh, you just oh, said it. Sorry. He's just yeah. No, it. no. I surely, I didn't think it was going to happen. No, look, Jay, yeah. after uh, after your pick at Giddy, Brock uh, Lopez went. Jalen Williams, who was in my queue, Gobert, Bancaro, who was in my queue, Rogier was in my queue. Uh, not in my queue, but he went. Zion, who I was thinking of, Derek White. I'm going to go Houses Milton. He is about as safe mm-hmm. a pick as you can love get it. right now. I love it. Like picking him up in the 70s for me. He just returns value that I want. Um, yep. I don't see any problem with that there. I think uh, Middleton. I need uh, points and threes. I'm going to get some later on. I need another point guard probably. Um, Interesting. I don't know who I'm going to go here. I am just going to get – I'm going to get this guy early because I might not be able to get him later on. I'm just going to pick up – I think it's too early for me – Tobias Harris. That's a bit of a panic – it's probably a one round too early. But again, this is I'm gambling on that position eligibility to fill up my spots in my forward gap with points. And I know Tobias Harris is going to get me points. He's going to get me some threes. He's not going to hurt me really anywhere. And I can aim for upside the next. The one I really wanted to get, I just couldn't get down there, was Kyle Kuzma. He was probably where I was really leaning um, more than anyone well, else. But that was, yeah, I've let him fall, which is a bit of a shame. So now I'm going to have to salvage some stuff because the dog right here, yes, yes, I know. This is this is what happens when you make a bad pick. Your dog brings you a squeaky <laughs> toy. There you go. go Man, that's early for Russell Westbrook. It is early, seventy eighth. But the other oh, good bloke who's gone off a little bit early, but he has more of a role now in Houston is Jalen Green. Buddy Hill at seventy six with mm-hmm. uncertainty was too early. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. We could call this the too early round. Uh, so everyone yeah. looks like to be cooking this draft up. Seventy four was Chris Paul of all people. Yeah, I mean Chris Paul. I mean you, with how it's going to go in. Um, in Golden State, uh, I'm just not sure about um, how Chris Paul's going to return his value. I mean, his assists are obviously going to be good, but geez, I'm just not. I just don't think I'm very much there with him. Um, this is coming up to my pick now. I'm going to get some more points, and I'm going for a. I'm going for someone that I am just way higher on this year, and I'm going to pick Coos. Um, yeah. I think he fits my team well, and I can really see Coos having a big year this year. Um, Me too. I know a lot of people are taking him around the 80s or so. I'm more than happy to get him around that area. Uh, I think that's going to return value. I can see him being close to top 60 this year, without yep. a doubt, in Washington. Um, I'm really liking it. Do you want to give us a recap of what well, oh, Clay? Jeez. There's some really early uh, picks going out on of my, here, Matty. That's going out of my queue. I really did think I was going to get him later on, and he has uh, – Trey Jones, another guy who was in my queue. This is where your queue starts to get absolutely shit-faced. Oh, yeah. Um, it's drunk on a Friday night. Um, 85th <laughs> was Dan Gafford. 84 was Trey Jones. 83 was Clay. Uh Geronimo Grant at 82 over in Portland. <laughs> Kyle Kuzma with 81. Anthony Simons at 80. Clint Capella, 79. And Russell Westbrook. These, guys, these aren't auto picks as well. These are guys in the no. queue. There's only one auto pick on. Right now, so this is these are guys who are playing around. Look, I went safe as houses. This is my safe of houses number one position draft pick. Now I'm going to get a bit saucy. I think. I think this is where I'm going to start to take some upside and to mess around a little bit with my draft. Um, yeah. There's a couple of guys that I'm watching. I'm not going to say their names, but this is the problem. When you say their names, and they're still on your draft board, I can't do it. But I want to do it very badly. We're at pick eighty-eight right now. Yep. This is outrageous that Ja Morant no. is still sitting there. And here, there he goes. And that's a great that pick for you because yeah. he was he was going to be a guy I wasn't going to queue up, but if he fell by that point in time, you're, you're able to get Ja late now, but you have to be able to have a competitive I – th- I think this is the caveat, and we want to be very clear with yeah. this. Our advice is 100% Ja Morant. Draft him if you have built a strong team that you can survive that suspension. Because yeah. you don't want to cook it up and put yourself behind the eight ball in your season. If you were drafting well and you're really confident in that your draft is going where it is and he's sitting there in the late 70s, 80s, slide him in because you're going to buoy your value towards the playoff time 100%. Mm-hmm. So that's it's great advice. But guys who are going now who I was looking at, Markel Fultz, Tyler Hero, uh, RJ Barrett, high at 91, um, Jabari yeah. Smith Jr. at 90. Yeah, unfortunately, that was – remember I said I want to dual eligibility? 
Yeah. That was my dual ability player that I'm getting around pick 100. If he falls to me at 96, 97 in the first pick, I am picking up Jabari Smith Jr. I think that is value for what it represents there in Houston. So if you are in pick one or pick two and he comes back to you in like 94, 95, 96, that's definitely a, a decision you want to make. Um, that's I've got – that he is for Marcus Smart as well. He was a guy I was looking at. So right now, when Junior's only there, I'm probably looking at. I'm probably looking at Bruce Brown, but there is yeah. one guy who I know. Oh, he's only got Senate eligibility here. Look, I'm going to take a Kongwu. Okay. Because I think okay. it's late for him. I think yeah, it's late for him, and I've got blocks. Eating that yep. blocks Good. category right now. Yep. It's a two, again, I'm thinking it's a two center league. If it's a normal league, I'm not. It is. Uh, no, it's, it's a two center league, so I can, I can. That's going to be on a rotation basis. I can always fill a utility spot, feed that. Um, if I'm going blocks, then I'm not going to go center heavy. I'm, look, I'm going to go my guy Bruce Brown because I've said if he's there around the hundredth pick because he's going to return a hundred mm-hmm. value. Safe as houses pick Bruce Brown, the headband. Um, love it. Lo- love him around that pick this year, and I think that's going to do very solid value for my team. So it's starting to shake up my team. Uh, Cade Cunningham, OG Ananobi, Bruce Brown, Chris Middleton, Pascal Siakam, uh, Tobias Harris, Nikola Jokic, Nick Claxton, and Emeka Okongwu um, right mm-hmm. there. I reckon it, um, the omelet, I call him the omelet because there's just a lot of O's going around. At a pick 100, <laughs> especially if Capella goes, I reckon the omelet's going to uh, be very good value this season for me. Yeah. Yep, it, it just depends on what they're going to do with Capella. Um, that's all it comes yep. down to. If he gets the minutes, we've seen that he can be a stud. Um, it's just going to depend on um, what they're going to do with Capella. We know that they've been shopping him a bit to maybe Dallas or something. Um, yeah, so we're just going to have to see how that plays out. So I think it's a safe pick. I think that they can – I think the minutes will probably be a minute split between Capella and Okongwu, um, maybe depending on matchup, but – Surely this is the year that Capella's gone. Like, surely. Mm. They've been talking about it for four years now that Congo is going to be the starting centre. He just needs to get rid of Capella. Um, yeah, I think it – jeez. Sorry. 103 for CJ McCollum. That is great value there, whoever just picked Yeah, Nishi at 102. Yeah, Valanciunas at 101. Robert Williams at 100. Duran at 99 is a nice one. Uh, Miles Bridges, who was in my queue and I let slide uh, at 98 after Bruce Brown. Uh, yeah, CJ, uh, John Collins at 103. Nice value for Wendell Carter Jr., I think, as well, at the 104th pick. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to go a swing here, and I'm going to take Zach Can Collins. you see my screen? Can you see yeah. my screen? You're watching it. Please don't look at my queue and steal my bar, my players. Nah, mate, don't don't do that, no, no, no. No, no, no. I took... Um... Because um, these are guys who I'm thinking right now. I'm, I'm trying to make a top 100 list, like guys outside the 100 that are slipping in drafts. Again, we did that slippers podcast, yeah. and this is where guys start to go off. So I've just stacked it with the slippers just to prove the point. Trey Murphy, the yeah. third now, because of that injury, is sliding off. He's only going to miss like 10, 12 games, hopefully, and he'll be back. Mm-hmm. So, or 10, 12 weeks, sorry. So there, there's like 10, 12 weeks. He's, he's out. Yeah. I, I, was he's, it, out. he's coming back. Cool. 10 or 12 weeks. No, he's 10 to 12 weeks back, I think. So he's going to come in and still give you some value there. Um, Wiggins, I really like Jada McDaniels. D'Angelo Russell now is starting to be ignored. And Scoot Henderson, with everything going on, is still on the board. So I know we're talking about these guys, Unreal. but these are guys who I'm starting to look at. Yep, I love that. I it's love 19 that games. Is it? No, it's like, it's, like, it's like 20 games he's out for. So that's Who's about, that, it's not even that long. Trey Murphy. It's like 20, it's like 20 games that he's going to be out for. I so it's like six I, weeks. I, I think that I'm getting my games may, weeks mixed up. Um, I think that he may miss the whole, like the rest of the 2023 portion of the season. I think he'll be more looking for like that January return because um, we can see it's there a Middleton say, situation like, from last year. It's like a Middleton situation from last it year. It could basically. be, yeah. Or like the yeah. um, the Jaron Jackson from two years ago. Oh, shit, I'm on the board. Where's my boy? Still got my, still got my eyes on. Still got my eyes on him. I'm not going to take my eyes off that prize. I'm not going to lie. Bang. Ooh. Simmons ben well. Simmons, your boy. Yeah, my free throw like is um, high enough to be able to deal with that. So, um, yeah, I love what Simmons is going to do this year, I think. Um, yeah, I'm just getting – I'm getting in. I'm getting – I'm strapped right in. Um, I'm Stop really ready for oh. Jay McDaniels goes. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. He, he can really do – 
Like he, he's yeah, got some like good that. defensive. Um, he does a steal and a block a game last season and getting that at 113. Yeah. I had him in my queue. Like I've, I, this is a real big Jack of all trades team. I really like how my team is shaping up, but I do need to get some points in threes next. So I probably had to lean away from that while also mm-hmm. getting me some other stats. Uh, look, Trey Murphy's still up there for threes. Like I'm still like looking at that as a, as a pick for me. That's yeah, yeah. really nice. I, I like him. Um, Gary Trent Jr. Yeah, up there for some points and threes. I'll, put, I'll throw him in my queue. Um, I've got, I've got like, oh geez, I've got a lot of guys who I could pick up on picks right now. Um, talk us through <laughs> up to, talk us up to me so I can make some decisions, please, Skidmore. Oh mate, I can't see them. Where are they? Yeah, I'll put them on, I'll put them on the board. Oh, there you fine. go. After you. Appreciate it too. We have, we have Al Horford. Go, oh geez, they're all just shipping off. We got DeAndre Russell one nineteen, Shaden Sharp one eighteen, Al Horford one seventeen. I'm not, I'm souring on Horford, mate. I, I don't like him at that position. Like, I don't like drafting him at all. I don't think anymore. Um, Spencer Dimwitty at one sixteen, Aaron Gordon one fifteen, Bobby Portis one fourteen, and then Jaden McDaniels, as we said, at one thirteen. Yeah, Al Horford, I'm out on him. Um, I don't know how. Like last year, he missed every back to back. Um, so there you know that I think the Celtics have 15 back-to-backs this year. Um, so I there's 15 games gone already. I'm, I'm not keen on his, what, four points per game and a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists. I, I'm staying clear of Al Horford. He's, he's out for me. Um, and then so you've just taken... You Scoot taken Henderson with the 120th pick. Yeah, oh, I took Trey Murphy. Huge, he, took him, he was still huge there. Huge value. I, I, think, I think huge value in Trey Murphy there. Look, again, he's going to be around for like maybe 20 games. It's like... T- like you can, I can survive that. Like that's twelve. Is that twelve weeks? Like how it shaped out? Like six weeks of the season. How we their schedule fits. I'm going to be back down. I'll have a deep dive into it. I just when he gets to there, he's going to be taken this round. He's not going to make it forty picks back to me. Uh, I love that there. Scoot Henderson at one twenty, especially now that I know that Dame is going. I think that's one of my biggest steals of the draft so far. D'Angelo Russell, 119. I had the choice between D'Angelo Russell and Scoot Henderson. The opportunity is there for Scoot. I'll lean Scoot. I know his field goal yep. percentage is going to coot because he's a rookie. But the fact that you're taking Shaden Sharp over Scoot Henderson, I think was a mistake by yeah, um, by Doc Rivers here. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie, 116. Aaron Gordon, 115. And Portis at the 114th. Uh, and it's making its way back up to you very, very soon. But I, I do like yeah. how my team is starting to out because that gave me points and threes that I was sorely lacking. PJ Washington. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a really, really good pick for you there. Um, now it just depends on what I want to do. I'm kind of going to go a bit more... Um, I think I need to take You've got two picks left. You'll have three after this one. Yeah, you go. So you've got three yeah. picks left to shape out the end of your draft. I'm going to take Jordan Clarkson there to get a couple more threes on my board, which I was looking uh, him on I can just shore up a little bit. My teams, I don't care about field goal percentage. Um, that's that's nothing I'm worrying about right now. Everything's looking okay there. Um, yeah, field goals and turnovers is really um, really not one that I've given a stuff about. So uh, they're down in the drain. So, yeah, Clarkson at 129. I'll take that. That's not bad. Mike Conley goes. Paul Reed, um, Matty, what are you thinking about Paul Reed now? I know everyone was chomping at the bit after what Nurse said, but with the addition yep. of Kelly Oubre, I can really see the Sixers now leaning more with Oubre possibly at the starting small forward spot and then sliding Tobias Harris up to the power forward. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm I'm unsure. I think that was a good acquisition by them. I think I think Kelly Oubre stayed out there for quite a long time. And I know love you love Tsunami Puppy um quite oh, yeah. a lot. I think he's, he's yeah, the he's sexiest man, man in basketball. He's a good looking man, that Kelly Oubre. Love is he still got his converse deal? That's a, just a random question. Uh but look, I think <laughs> yeah. I but I think that's also a trade package because I think he becomes a very interesting piece with the contract that he's on to add into any bundle deal. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm buying a PlayStation. Oh, I get Zero Horizon Dawn with that. Cool. Let me get that package. And I think that's what he. I think that's what he starts to become at a point. Um, yep. And so I think he's definitely there as that one. Oh my! Is my my guy still here on the way back? I can't not take him. Oh, <laughs> Who are you looking at? I already taken my pick. Obi Toppin. You know I'm oh, taking. Yeah. Obi. You know yeah. I'm taking Obi Toppin. I just there's guys who I'm still here, and we're now at pick 139. So talk us through your pick up to mine, Skitty. Um, Oh, there goes Colin Sexton and um, Harrison Barnes, who I'm not 
Uh, oh, I'm not sure about Harrison Barnes. Barnes. There's no upside in Barnes. I mean, I think um, I think Murray's probably going to be more uh, going to get more of the ball and take a bit more of Harrison Barnes's um, Harrison Barnes's food off his plate. Geez, who the I just missed who went then, but then Javon Carter just went. That's uh, yeah, not a bad pick at one three two for John Von Carter if they need that. Keldon Johnson one forty two, Colin Keldon Sexton Johnson. at one forty one. I am about to get one of the steals of the draft at the hundred and forty fourth pick. I'm not going to lie, Josh Hart. I kept looking at him and I was like, Nah. <laughs> um, I'm in two minds. One of the guys I'm liking there. There's another guy I haven't highlighted yet because I just think he's gone around in a lot of drafts and he gives me the threes and points that I desperately need. Um, mm-hmm. Is Sadiq Bay. Um, I think okay. he's got tremendous value um, in what he does. The upside of this pick is Jalen Johnson, but I think Sadiq has a role. I'm going to take him because I know that there's a role for him. Him and Emmanuel quickly yeah. are my other options. Yeah. Guys I've left on yeah. the board were my homie, Obi Toppin, the homie, Obi. Um, Asua Thompson, you know I love Asua Thompson. I left yeah. him on the board to go with that Sadiq base. This is with my upside picks. And again, if these guys are here on the waiver wire straight after my draft, I'm dropping and I'm using that pick straight away. Uh, because yeah, I get first that. waiver prior- because I get first waiver priority as well. So this is something you want to pay attention to. If your pick number one and your draft finishes with the last pick being 14, you Golly. get the number one waiver yeah. priority. You don't want to burn it too early. Like you want to hold on to that waiver priority right there. But what you do mm-hmm. want to use is you want to be conscious of making a good pick. But then again, 147, I saw Thompson went off and there was my upside pick. But again, I just wanted to feed roll guys because this is my safest houses number one. And for all projections and purposes, I'm right up the top there, I reckon, of this draft. Um, and I think you've drafted very well too, Skitty. But this has fallen my way. And I stuffed up a yeah. kick with it. I could have gone Kuzma earlier and not Tobias Harris. Mm. But I think Tobias was my real-rounded, safest houses pick there. Um, KCP, yeah. Obi Toppin. Uh, there you go. The last two picks, guys who I was looking at in the queue are out. I took Obi. Um, there you go. Good pick. Good pick at 153. Yeah. Obi Toppin is, is going to be value. A top 120 player, I think, on the season uh, and has a place in NBA fantasy. 154th pick there was uh, Contavious Corbell Ploke. Let me put the teams up here on the board and let's mm-hmm. talk about yours, Skidmore. This is your team. Talk us through. You didn't get a second center. Uh, no, I did. You did? I took, you didn't fill no, it automatically. Uh, no, I took the one. I took the Spurs back uh, back court, uh, front court in uh, Collins and Wembenyama. Ah, see, this is the great thing about Victor Wembenyama. He has dual eligibility, and if you draft Correct. him in Yahoo, he is automatically giving you the power forward spot. So this yep. is that dual eligibility. Talk us through your team, there, mate. They're on the screen now. Yeah, man. So uh, we've taken Lamelo Ball with the first pick, Devin Booker, uh, Paul George. Uh, then we got Victor Wembenyama, Bradley Beal, Josh Giddy. Kyle Kuzma, Ja Morant with the last one. The only reason I took Ja Morant there was he was slipping, but also, too, I had some pretty good stability with my teams for games played. I don't think uh, – I'm not worried too much about LaMelo's ankles. Like, that was just three random incidents. Paul George, not – like, you know, he's a little bit under the injury bubble. Book is solid, though. So is Giddy. Um, so should be, theoretically, Beal. So I'm not worried about taking Ja there. I think um, that kind of – Works all right for my team. Uh, then we had Zach Collins, maybe a little bit early, but that's all right. I needed a center. Um, ben Simmons, uh, Jordan Clarkson, Quentin Grimes, and Obi Toppin. So my points are looking good. My rebounds are looking good. My assists are, are looking very good. Same as my threes. I discounted um, my field goal percentage and my turnovers. Don't care about turnovers at all. My free throw percentage is solid. My blocks are okay just be purely because of Wemby. Uh, and my steals are good with Paul George and Lamello um, and Ben Simmons. So I think my team kind of worked out pretty well the way that I was going for. I didn't kill my free throw percentage um, too bad at all with um, when having um, Bradley Beal and Devin Booker up there. So they kind of will, will carry that through, I assume. Um, yep. So I think the team kind of worked out pretty well. Um, as I said, the field goal percentage is going to be horrible, but that's okay. I don't care about that. Um, and then I was able to take a couple of fly picks that I'm a bit higher on um, with Kuzma and Obi Toppin to a degree. Um, ben Simmons, obviously, as well. I'm very, I'm very high back on Ben. So um, if I, I pick Ben at 112, 
Uh, I think he can be top 60. Um, I don't think he can get back to his top 20 that he used to be, but I think there's definitely a round where Ben Simmons, especially if he's the point guard in Brooklyn, um, he can work and uh, bring back the fantasy numbers that we want. So I'm kind of happy with how my team uh, turned out. Um, It would be more of a... I'm banking on a little bit of upside from my own my own knowledge um, than what you know the um, the computer will generate for you on the actual site, but um, that's quite all right. Now I want to hear about your team, Matty G. I love Give it. it. Oh, this might be my apart from me cooking that pick up and just taking Tobias over Coos because I wanted to go there. In my head, in Maddie's head, I was like, just do the safest houses pick, do the safest houses number one pick. You've taken Middleton, lean into the safest houses advice. I think this actually went very, very well for me. Uh, looking at fan of Z scores and looking like where I'm strong without using the Z score rating, mate. I've actually I've, I've clipped steals. Like I'm not losing steals any week. I'm not losing. What are, what's your steals early. at? About four. I'm plus four. Like, I'm so strong. I'm. 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 It's, it's. 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 I've really managed to just get guys who play basketball very well in my yeah. team. Um. And I. And I like it. This is the. This is my. Jack and a master of a few trades. Cade Cunningham, OG Ananobi, Bruce Brown, Chris Middleton, Pascal Siakam, Tobias Harris, Nikola Jokic, Nick Claxton, Aneko Okongwu, the omelette, Scoot Henderson, uh, Trey Murphy the third, Josh Hart, and Sadiq Bay. These are really well-rounded players. Um, I probably could have used some more threes. I think threes and points is where I've hurt myself. But these guys, because they do some tasty other things, I could put out some trade bait along the way. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably where I'm looking at there. But I really like how it's shaped out. I think I've got a really solid foundation, but my field goal percentage is elite. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's really high. Like I've got guys who boy that with like guys like Clacco. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. love my Clacco. Um, you know him from 2K and my team days. I love putting yeah. him on as much as I can. Um, but I've got guys who do a little bit of all and get me out of position assists, out of position mm-hmm. rebounds. Josh Hart is the guard. But when you base mm-hmm. a team off Nicole Jokic, you can build safe. You do not have to go and... And, and do wildly, you know, flyer picks. But you also can with Jokic. I just learned yeah. away from that with this number one pick. So this is being Maddie's mock from the number one pick, the Savers Houses. I'll probably do a, like a way too hype train from the first pick if you have Jokic with like, this is the overconfident draft. You know what I mean? But I look through this mm. list and I'm happy with every single guy from front to back with the role they have. I think it's a really competitive team. And I think the only things that hurt me there are points and, and three pointers that I can see. Uh, but I'm hoping that that really changes with Scoot Henderson and what he can bring in that team to help buoy me a little bit there. But, you know, if, if Kate can come along a little bit with some shots, I think that really opens up the board for me, Skitty. Yeah, man. No, Cade's, Cade is, yeah, he's going to be it this year, I believe. Um, and that's a good thing about having Nikola Jokic um, as your first pick. I mean, you can just go any which way that you want. Um, so I think you've drafted a fantastic team there. Also, to getting Pascal Siakam to pair with Jokic, I think that personally is an absolute ripper. Um, yep. And then also, too, like if uh, you might not be as high as on, as, uh, on that Tobias Harris pick, but let's say Harden goes. Let's say they don't get a massive return for yeah. uh, James Harden. And then we have, you know, insert shooting guard, point guard here. Um, yeah. Tyrese Maxi. I wish, I could, Ray, call him, I wish I could call him Houses, Houses Harris, but I've got Houses yes. Milton because these are dudes who are just safe in your drafts. There's nothing. Yeah. There's, hey, hey, Skitty, I'm going to turn you on and say some stuff. I'm gonna, by the way, Skitty and Siri is very similar because every time I say your name, Siri's like, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> what's good? Let me get you some sexy. Let me get you some sexy names in your draft right now. Cade Cunningham. Make noises mm, in yes. response to when I say guys. Oh, yeah. mm. uh, Donovan Mitchell. Oh yes, very nice. Yeah. Tobias Harris. <laughs> Chris Chris Middleton. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Like you, you. There's nothing like that's really hype. But these are very yeah. serviceable basketball players. And again, we're talking fantasy, and we're talking service. We're talking availability of games, and we're talking what they can bring to the table. So I think again, my my key takeaways: if you draft in the number one position, build safe off Jokic because it doesn't hurt you anyway. You have the most solid foundation in NBA fantasy basketball when having Nikola Jokic. You're looking at a basic walking triple double, and you can pivot based on availability. I lent into blocks and steals more than I thought I was going to, and it worked out fabulously well. And I wasn't happy with the Harris pick. I probably could have picked him up later and got more of an upside pick. 
But then I decided to just draft safe for this experiment and it worked because you never know what's going to shake out in your draft and where it's going to go and where guys are going to go at the end of the day. So my best advice is draft safe off Nikola Jokic, but don't be afraid to pepper it with some really beautiful upside, maybe even a couple of rooks like I did with Scoot to help give you some value there. Uh, key takeaways from you from drafting at your position at nine. Uh, yeah, the, the hard thing at nine is it's so like up in the air. Like when you get the first pick, uh, you know you're getting Nikola Jokic. So you can start to plan what you want after that. The thing about nine is, as I said before this draft started, I wanted Giannis just to yeah. try and do a punt. Uh, free throw build. Six. Um, six. Yeah, six. Unbelievable. The the thing I've noticed is about doing these mock drafts as well is that you just never know when people are going to go as well. So, um, yeah, I, like you might do a few of these and you go, okay, I know that this person starts to fall around here. We know that centers are starting to go um, a little bit later on. In Like they're kind of more clumped up now. You're not getting yep. you're getting no kitchen and bead first, but then it starts to go to probably about the 30s or maybe like the 40s, and then they're all kind yep. of clumped for a bit. And then there's, and there's a later clump later play. down the track yeah, with Alan Shunis and and yeah Adams and all those the other like, no traditional the, the Dan Gaffords, the Wendell Carter Juniors, yeah. all down the back end. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. So it's kind of like it's it's like some people are playing um, one center leagues when there's actually two center leagues. So they're not like they're continuing that clump instead of realizing, oh, hey, I should actually probably take a center a little bit earlier because in those one center leagues, you're just going to let like the Wendell Carters just kind of fall back because you don't care because you've got your center. Yep. So you need to be uh, aware of what your league settings are. You have to be aware of how many centers you have in it, um, how many, if you have an IR, because then if you have an IR, JAR uh, can come a little bit earlier off. Um how many people you have on the bench. So if uh, if it's a two-guard league and then you have two players on the bench, you don't want to be going all out for these, like, you know, guards early on. You want to be able to space it out and really make sure that you really hone in on what your league settings are before the draft starts. Um, so, yeah, I guess my biggest takeaway is, you know, uh, you just got to know your, go know your stuff. And then also shout out to Fantasy Scores that's been helping us make our decisions a little bit easier. So um, yeah, don't forget to jump on their website and use yeah, promo code insight to get five US bucks off currently right now. It gets the best value to get Ben Z scores to help your Z scores mm -hmm. with your draft. And also talking about best value, you want the best value on stuff like your home loan and whether or not if yes, best value for your financial information. And that comes from a student you said, because if you ever wonder what the best bank is and if your dream home is affordable, you don't have to wonder anymore. Talk to our friend Ryan at Astute Newstead, who can give you confidential lending advice with no obligations attached. Uh, don't get pigeonholed into one lender. Ryan specializes with a whole bunch over 50, including the major banks. So you know you're going to have names you can trust there as well. That's a panel that he goes to. He gets you the best information on personal, vehicle, and business loans. Reach out to Ryan at Astute Newstead on 0431 766 784 in Australia. That's 0431. 766 784 or email ryanh at that's ryanh at eganwealth.com and use code insight to let him know we've sent you also make sure you check out our good friend standard squeeze repping the gear right that's now been drinking my coffee cup from it love them that's, standard our squeeze. that's our boys love you ash you do amazing yeah. work take care go and check out their website if you love camping if you love adventure if you love having a morning coffee or if you love having a beer you need to go and check out this gear at standard squeeze and if you use the promo code insight 15 you get a tremendous discount 15 percent off your swag make sure you get onto that one yeah, and make yeah. sure you get onto liking and subscribing absolutely everything on our channel because we do nothing but good content coming into the next season i am <laughs> at mbag where's this is at filthy ifs we are inside nba